All right, everybody, we're about to get started. Good morning. I'm going to uh, present the secretary and then react to his announcement, and then we'll hear, hear from the congressman, and then we'll be glad to take any any questions you might have. And Secretary Moniz will acknowledge presence of the lab directors and we're all glad to have them here and others of you as others of you as well. In 2004 Senator Jeff Dingman came to me and said uh, you need to go to Yokohama and see the Earth Simulator which was then said to be the world's fastest computer so I dutifully as a junior senator did and flew all the way over to Japan and looked looked at it. It didn't look too much different than than other than other computers but the result of that was he and I worked together and 2004 with other members of Congress to initiate for a new initiative on supercomputing for the United States. We thought it was important that the United States lead the world in supercomputing. Uh, President Obama's administration has made that a top priority. Both Secretary Chu and Secretary Moniz have. The Congress has responded over the last six years. We've double funded double funding for supercomputing, and so the United States caught up with Japan, and then China caught up with the United States. And maybe Secretary Moniz will have something to say about that today. We're delighted uh, to have the United States Secretary of Energy, President uh, Moniz. Well, thank you, uh, Senator Alexander. Um, uh, Senator Alexander, uh, as you know, has been a, a great champion, uh, first of all, for science uh, and the infrastructure that we need to do science in this country. And a big part of that is, of course, support for the National Labs uh, system. Uh, and uh, and he, he remains a great, a great champion and a, a great friend of what we are trying to, trying to accomplish. Uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, our friends uh, from the other side of, the, of Capitol Hill, uh, uh, Chuck Fleischman and, uh, and Bill Foster. Uh, we may be having uh, Congressman Lipinski here, here as well, uh, if, he can, if he can get a schedule uh, aligned. And, and uh, let me say again, great champions of, of, of science uh, and of our national lab systems and what, what they do. One of them, I'll let you guess, may even have worked at one of the laboratories. Just a guess. <laughs> Read the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and also, I, want, I have to say that this also demonstrates directly uh, that the kind of support that uh, Senator Alexander uh, mentioned uh, uh, and all three of them represent uh, is also a bipartisan issue. This is not about, uh, about a party. This is really about strengthening the scientific enterprise in the United States, uh, for which the DOE is really part of the backbone. Uh, and part of that backbone comes because of the tools we provide uh, the community, the whole community, uh, whether it is synchrotron light sources, neutron scattering, uh, or supercomputers and, and uh, high performance computing. So we are, we are serving 30,000. Uh, scientists roughly uh, across the country every year with this uh, uh, array of, of tools. So today uh, we're going to announce uh, two new awards that really uh, ensure the United States uh, retains uh, global leadership in uh, supercomputing. Uh, I want to emphasize, uh, and Senator Alexander correctly uh, gave the, uh, the story about uh, uh, Japan, China, the United States, etc. Today we will be talking about reaching a new level of computation of speed uh, and how, how that applies. But I do want to emphasize leadership is not only about the speed of the computer. Uh, it's how one matches that, integrates that with algorithms, software, etc. And I would say that, you know, at least in my view, uh, this country has by far the deepest experience in this whole array of, 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 of linked technologies. Uh, we will, we will sustain that leadership, and what, I'm, what I'll be talking about today is very much part of that whole big picture. Although speed is something to talk about, we will, uh, we will certainly focus, uh, focus on that. So these, uh, uh, these awards uh, will put us on a fast track uh, to reaching computing capabilities uh, about five to seven times uh, faster uh, than today's uh, leading supercomputers, uh, and lay the groundwork for the next step 20 to 40 times you know, when I was, uh, I'm not a rookie here at the Department of Energy, uh, when I was uh, here the first time uh, in, in the 90s, uh, that was a time when driven 
to provide a fundamental change in how the department stewards the nuclear weapon stockpile. Uh, where we had to go completely to a science-based approach. A big part of that was focusing on a next generation, a uh, hundred teraflops uh, of, 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 of speed, uh, so that we could maintain the stockpile uh, without uh, ever resorting again to uh, testing. That has been an enormous success uh, now over two decades. Two decades. Uh, and we, we hit that goal uh, in the middle of Alaska in 2005. Uh, the teraflops uh, uh, was, uh, was achieved. In the last decade, we've gone another two orders in magnitude. Now with the, let's say, uh, 20 uh, pedophiles, uh, 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 another big thing to recognize in this evolution uh, from the 90s to today. In the 90s, as I said, it was really driven by the weapons work. But then at the same time, in the late 90s, we made a strategic decision that we were going to get that integrated directly into our science and energy programs, also at a new level. And today, as you will, you will see, what we're talking about, and I will point out General Klotz, head of our head of NNSA, Mike Notek, our Deputy Under Secretary for Energy and Science, they're both here because this is a complete science and nuclear security uh, partnership. So the investment is through a program called uh, Fast Forward 2, uh, working with American companies to develop critical technologies needed to deliver these affordable uh, and energy efficient uh, uh, advanced uh, extreme scale uh, computing uh, R&D in the next decade. Uh, actually, I should go back and talk first about the first part of the announcement. Excuse me, I was jumping ahead already. Uh, to today, what we're talking about is uh, investing $325 million uh, to build uh, two state of the art supercomputers. Uh, at Oak Ridge and Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. So I said a science lab and a, and a, a nuclear, nuclear security lab. Uh, these systems uh, are, are managed by the CORAL team, uh, and CORAL is a collaboration of Oak Ridge, Argonne, uh, uh, and Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. This was established last year to leverage these supercomputing investments and reduce costs while developing these unprecedented uh, supercomputers. And the lab directors of those three labs are here, if you want to acknowledge yourselves. Tom Mason from Oak Ridge, uh, Goldstein from Livermore, and Peter Littlewood from, uh, from Arthur. And uh, uh, Oak Ridge's uh, a new system, Summit, uh, will provide at least five times the performance of, of the lab's current system. Livermore's new, new computer, called Sierra, uh, will deliver at least seven times uh, its current capabilities, and Argonne uh, is still in the formative stage, and they will be announcing their specific uh, coal award at a later time. Also want to acknowledge uh, the private sector uh, partners in Coral, uh, and raise your hands, IBM, uh, NVIDIA, Mellanox, uh, and then later I'm going to mention some other companies for the second part of the, of the, of the program. Uh, so again, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're very excited about this, and I want to say that also the work with the companies is also something that in the 90s, as we started on this journey, was part and parcel of what, what we do. We can't do it without that. Now, today, uh, we're going to announce an additional $100 million in funding uh, to further develop extreme-scale extreme supercomputing, the, gen the next generation of the this is not the end of the journey. We're, we're going to the next level, so-called exascale uh, level, uh, over the next, uh, over the next uh, decade. Uh, and, uh, and it requires the partnership of all that I have uh, mentioned uh, already. Uh, this investment is through what, what I call Fast Forward 2, uh, which is again working with American companies uh, to develop critical technologies to deliver affordable, energy-efficient, advanced extreme scale computing research and development. I should say the 150 uh, uh, petaflop scale of the two investments we're making today, uh, we're talking about getting five to seven times in computing speed, but we're also talking about doing that 
but say maybe only 10% more energy. That is critical as we are growing up. But we're talking beyond 10 megawatts for, for a single computer already. So we need to keep working on many fronts, including our energy, energy efficiency. So um, uh, this, is, this is basically uh, where we are going. Uh, I won't go through uh, all the examples of, of what this program has already meant, that is the high performance computing push. Uh, we already talked about it being central to our success in the weapons program without, uh, without testing, but we could go through what it's meant for science, uh, including uh, climate uh, modeling, including combustion, understanding combustion, designing efficient engineered systems with industry, uh, high, high, highly efficient energy, uh, 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 engines, uh, super truck, uh, one of the one of the con contributions to getting a 60 percent energy reduction uh, in our in class A vehicles has come from modeling the aerodynamics. So so this is really really critical. And uh, just an ending, I should have I should have noted also the uh, in fast forward two again as I said it's with industry and in addition to uh, IBM and Nvidia who I already <coughs> referred to we have Cray. Intel and uh, and uh, AMD. Do you know anybody from AMD? Uh, they're still part of the program. Uh, anyway, so uh, so that's that's really what I wanted to want wanted to say. Uh, we are going to see enormously important contributions uh, again across the science, energy, and nuclear security uh, activities in the department. Uh, once again, we could not do it without the support of of, of these and, and other uh, key members of Congress who support the labs, and more importantly, in my view, support the American science enterprise, uh, that it remains uh, the driver of, of innovation, uh, economic development, and security in this country. So thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Bernie. Just a brief reaction, and then I'll introduce Congressman Fleischman. Uh, this announcement means, I hope, that once again, the world's fastest computers in the United States and in Tennessee will at least try to say, once again, it's an Oak Ridge. But uh, I think as Secretary Moniz made clear, the important thing is not only the speed of the computer, but it's the fact that we use it better. And I, especially as a member of Congress, like to see the cooperation between the three laboratories uh, in combining our resources rather than just competing with them. We're, we're not competing with each other, but this we're working together to try to make this the place in the world the best supercomputing, and it takes very fast supercomputers to do that. As the Secretary said, this is the result of six years of this administration working closely with Democrats and Republicans in Congress to put priority on supercomputing. We have a new initiative, we double funding, we regain the lead, and if I have the privilege of being the Chairman of the Energy and Water Appropriations Subcommittee in the new Congress, which I expect to be, I intend to keep that priority there as best as best I can. We've learned a lot about the value of these supercomputing techniques to everyday life in the United States. It's not just uh, maintaining our nuclear weapons at turn. It's not just weather forecasting. Uh, it could be uh, using the supercomputers to find the fraud and abuse in the healthcare system. For it, we are finding out in Tennessee, we're, we're a center for advanced manufacturing, we have lots of auto industry, Rata moves in, uh, many companies move in, and they're finding that if they go to our national laboratories, I'm sure it's true in the other laboratories, that the combination of materials research and supercomputing helps advance manufacturing in the United States, so we can make in the United States what we sell here and what we sell around the world. That means more jobs. So this is a focus that this is an exotic sounding term, but it has an everyday impact to our national defense, uh, our health, and also the level of family incomes we have from good jobs. So I, I thank the Secretary for his priority. He'll keep his priority there. I'll keep my priority there. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Congressman Chuck Fleischman. Chuck Fleischman is, a, is from Chattanooga. He's a member of the Energy and Water Appropriations Subcommittee uh, in the Congress and he will be crucial in maintaining the priority for supercomputing as we move ahead and try to maintain our position. Thanks. Senator, thank you so much. I, uh, I'm Chuck Fleischman. I represent the people of the great third district of Tennessee in the House. 
I was on a plane after my first term in Congress, sitting next to our senior senator. And at that time, Tennessee did not have a member on the Appropriations Committee. I said, Senator, where should I serve? And he said, I'd like to speak to you about appropriations in the Appropriations Committee. Well, I was told a long time ago that the senator is very wise, and he did give me some sage advice, so I pursued that. And I was privileged to serve on the Appropriations Committee and uh, the Energy and Water Subcommittee. But one of the things Lamar talked with me about that day was supercomputing. I didn't know much about supercomputing. and a matter of fact, I didn't know a lot about what was going on in DOE world at the time. I was political science, history major, and lawyer. Well, representing the great city of Oak Ridge has really been the privilege of a lifetime. It's incredible what we do there. Tom Mason is here. Oak Ridge National Laboratory not only continues to lead in supercomputing, but in so many different areas. And it's a pleasure to be with you, sir. Uh, and I must say, Secretary Moniz, uh, your tenure as, as secretary has been incredible. It's Chuck and Ernie. We work very well together. And I think as Americans, it's incredible that we can come together and make a commitment towards excellence. We don't see a lot. We don't see enough about of that. But supercomputing is one of those things that we can step up and lead the world again. So uh, as long as I have a voice and a vote on the Appropriations Committee, the Energy and Water Subcommittee of Appropriations, you have my strong and profound commitment to funding supercomputing so that we can again lead the world and maintain that great, great economic leadership that we need to move forward. With that, uh, I've been tasked to uh, introduce my fellow members from the House, um, my good friend Dan Lipinski, um, who actually I think taught at the University of Tennessee for a while, is here, and, and Bill Foster as well. So without further, uh, my friend Dan Lipinski. Thank you. I want to uh, thank Secretary Moniz and uh, everyone from Oregon, Oak Ridge, and uh, uh, Livermore who are able to come out today. And it's it's great to be here for for this announcement. Uh, we're fortunate in Illinois to have two of the fastest supercomputers in the world in Mira at uh, Argonne and Blue Waters at the University of Illinois. Last year, I had the uh, privilege of being at the launch of the Blue Water System, uh, the completion of a years-long construction project. So I'm proud to be here today to announce the beginning of new projects at uh, Oak Ridge in, in uh, Lawrence Livermore, and hopefully very soon also at uh, Argonne. These projects are very critical to American competitiveness because building faster super, supercomputers we extend the frontier of what is possible with computing technology. That drives efforts to make processors smaller and faster and to make better use of new architectures. The benefits of these can be seen in our smartphones that we all have. Uh, one or maybe more smartphones that we can hold in our hand that are faster than the fastest supercomputers were 30 years ago. What we call Silicon Valley came about because of U.S. investment in defense and scientific research, with a little help from scientists and engineers at Bell Labs. Today, computing infrastructure is just as vital in keeping our economic engines going in the tech industry. And high performance computing also has dozens of important applications across the research, industrial, and defense se sectors. Supercomputers like Mira have traditionally been a strength of U.S. investment in research, but today that lead is being challenged by other countries. We have dropped from having 291 uh, supercomputers listed in the ranks of the top 500 to 233. Milestones like today, though, are part of maintaining our lead in this field. And I really want to applaud Secretary Moniz and Director Littlewood but our leadership and vision in keeping the U.S. at the forefront. We also need to make sure Congress does its part. And we need to continue to fund these high performance computing projects. In 2010, I helped write the American Competes Act that increased investments in computing and elsewhere. And Secretary Alexander uh, almost single handedly was responsible in those, uh, those waiting days, I remember. in in 2010 of getting that, uh, getting that bill done. So I thank him for that and all the work that, that he has done. 
Now we need to pass the American Supercomputing Leadership Act that would encourage projects like these and put us on a path toward exascale computing. Fighting for increased investments for high performance computing and other critical areas of science are going to be one of my top priorities on the House Science Committee in the next Congress. Very happy to, as I said, to be part of this announcement today. I hope DOE and Argonne, along with Oak Ridge and Lawrence Livermore, will continue their excellent work in this area. Uh, and uh, with that, um, I don't know if it's my responsibility to uh, announce my colleague. Where are, we, where are we going from here? Right there. Right there. <laughs> All right. Well, well here is, um, I, I always say I'm, I'm only an engineer. Bill Foster is a uh, scientist, a physicist, and I, I endorse uh, that statement. Uh, <laughs> so it's it's great that I, Bill and I share the representation of Argonne National Lab, and I think we make a great team in doing that. The scientists and the lowly engineer, lowly, we're the ones who actually make things work. Uh, but uh, I introduce uh, Bill Foster. Well, well, thank you all for coming out today. I'm Congressman Bill Foster, and I represent Illinois 11th District, which contains the northern one-third of Argonne National Lab, including the High Performance Computing Center, by about, about two or three hundred meters. <laughs> um, but I also represent uh, about 50% of the strategic reserve of physicists in the United States Congress. And in fact, with the uh, pending retirement of, of Congressman Rushold, I will be 100% of the strategic reserve. Um, and before uh, coming to Congress, I worked in the Fermi National Accelerator lab for many years. And actually, there are some uh, large, some of very large giant accelerators for the ones that I designed and uh, the teams that built it, and they work, despite me not being an engineer. <laughs> um, but I, I'm really excited about this announcement. I, I'd, I'd like to thank all of the vendors present. Uh, I spent a fair amount of time on their websites and um, way too much time last night. And I was very impressed. You know, the, the two procurements that are being announced are, are both for 150 uh, petaflop machines, which for those uh, political scientists in the audience, that means you can, you know, these are machines that will do 150 million instructions in the time it takes light to travel one foot. Um, but that, that's what we're doing. And another thing I like, because of the stage procurement here, we're seeing the Livermore machine uh, and the Old Ridge machine being spec'd at 150 petaflops. And while Argonne is still in process, this allows Argonne to specify their machine at 151 petaflops. <laughs> <laughs> thereby, thereby ensuring the Illinois 11th district at its place at top of the list of most powerful supercomputers. But the truth is that, and one of the things I like about the quote book, is that it is a very good mix between the, the application-specific aspects of this. Um, there are unique problems that each of the laboratories are focusing on, um, as well as general purpose science projects. And this allows you to specify the hardware um, in a way that matches the core of the problems that you start to create. Um, these 150 problems are completely useless if you do not have um, if you do not have the memory to store those results. And if you do not have the memory to have to talk to, um, to communicate those results to the other processors working on that problem. And a big part of this effort is to make sure that that happens in an energy efficient and, and cost efficient way. And so that I was impressed by the, the technical detail and what the was, was well done. Um, we very seldom get chances to, to poke in deep into the, the, um, the nuts and bolts of the agencies that that operate under Congress's overview, and when you poke in deep and you see high quality work, it makes you feel better about the operations. So, thank you all for well well machine. Um, and I, I just want to also um, say a little bit about the, uh, the importance of this thing to the long term health of, of the computing enterprise in the United States. You know, it, it sort of breaks a lot of our hearts that I think Silicon Valley closed its last foundry. It is a struggle. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're a very healthy chip industry, but not only that they're anymore. It is a struggle. A lot of the things, as people mentioned, that are moving offshore are technological needs and are sure. And uh, there is a big problem with the boom if you're completely dependent on, on commercial uh, commercial markets. Uh, there's a problem with the boom bust. You know, if this year's game console is a, is a, is a bust, uh, you don't want that to bankrupt and, and eliminate the 
the strength of the key manufacturers. And the government provides a very valuable flywheel in keeping this going and keeping us, keeping uh, the entire range of uh, industry necessary to support supercomputing and all their brains. So um, for that reason, I'm very proud that the, the United States Congress and the National Labs are a part of being on the flywheel to make sure that we maintain the following very important. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if there are any questions, Secretary Winnie's will be or others. <laughs> <laughs> So is the funding for these computers in place or will it require another appropriation? And also, when will these computers actually be ready? Well, the, uh, the, the, the funding level that we have right now, the commitment uh, that we have seen the appropriations committee will, will support this, this initiative. Of course, it's always an annual appropriations process, but, but uh, we have every expectation that, uh, that this will be funded uh, at the level that we need to, to, to deliver this product uh, in uh, in, in a few years, so we're talking, you would agree, 17, 2017 is kind of, is kind of the target, at least, at least for these first two years. And then, as I said, uh, on another decade scale from today, we are looking to get the next <laughs> one to two orders of magnitude into the one to ten uh, exaflop uh, uh, regime. Uh, it's getting to be pretty mind-blowing, actually, uh, getting, getting up there. But as also was emphasized, uh, uh, I mentioned it, others mentioned it. Uh, it's really about a lot more than just that hardware. Uh, it's a big system integration issue uh, spanning many, many uh, departments. But are, uh, he's, he's from the Middle Bridge area. Is, is it accurate to say that, that the, uh, the administration will request the funds? I, absolutely. And I, I, absolutely. we have been funding at the administration's level the, the Oak Ridge computer should be in place about 2017. And the size of the initiative uh, means that that level of, of emphasis on supercomputing at Oak Ridge ought to last for a decade or so. Is that, is that about right? Yes, uh, that, that's mm -hmm. right. And, and uh, at these laboratories and maybe a couple of other laboratories, we <coughs> will be advancing this, as I said, to the next level. Uh, I, I do want to emphasize what Senator Alexander said from the administration and the Congress, we're all on the same page on this, and, uh, and we have uh, every intention to do this. It will not get less. It will not get less costly as we continue that march uh, to the to the next level. Yes. 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 Um, my name is Pat uh, My question is: Japan, Europe, China are spending a lot in this area. How do you think? this investment that you're making puts us comparative to those other countries. And also, is it as important to maintain leadership and speed as it is as important to maintain leadership in programming and integration? Uh, yes, as I, as I said, I mean, the, the speed is, is one, it's a nice parameter to say that we are out there, you know, at, at the frontier, but that will not mean anything unless we uh, make that investment in integrated uh, uh, software, integrated algorithms, uh, as I mentioned, uh, things like uh, how one manages the traffic uh, uh, in, in the computer. Uh, the, uh, and I, I should also say that, you know, flops is itself not, not the only measure, uh, even in that kind of speed sense. That is, this is about now handling incredible data. You want to talk big data, this is big data. And that's where actually the example given in terms of the healthcare uh -huh. comes in. We are talking about the ability now to have to handle enormous data, sometimes data sets that are not structured very well uh, for these computers to handle. So, so it's, a, it's this across the board. Uh, and that's why uh, labs and industry, uh, and frankly, uh, some, some very important uh, supporting universities uh, for developing some of the fundamental, uh, some of the fundamentals is absolutely critical, and this I think is where Japan, China, Europe, look, everybody has seen the importance of this uh, over these last uh, over these last couple couple of decades, but I I still maintain uh, that we have the deepest well of experience by far, uh, and the ability to integrate all these uh, into an effective system 
uh, for uh, for managing uh, uh, complex uh, uh, flowing dynamics uh, in a variety of systems to the handling of just simply huge data and being able to to, to make sense uh, of, of those data. Yes, question for Senator Alexander and Mr. Fleischman. Uh, you're both appropriators and you obviously support the, the department's mission. Do you think we'll be able to continue to, to sustain these sort of investments um, in, in the next Congress when we've got Republicans controlling both chambers? Well, uh, yes, is the answer to that. It's a matter of priorities. If we have to make an annual judgment under the budget caps that have been approved by Congress for the next 10 years, the discretionary side of funding goes up about two and a half percent every year. So it's a matter of priorities. This has been my priority for the last six years, just like it's been the President's priority, and we've managed working together to get to this point. So uh, there are no guarantees in an appropriations process, but we fully intend to support this level, and I know Senator Feinstein from California, who is the senior Democrat on our appropriations committee, also supports the Office of State <coughs> Appropriations at, at this level. So we'll, we'll do our best, and I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to do it. We're, we're broadly, though, um, support for the, the, the department in general, not just the superintendent. Well, as we worked together, several of us, on the America Competes Act several years ago, which called for a doubling of funding in energy research, that's still my goal. And uh, I, I think we need to restrain spending in some other areas and double funding for energy research, and this is a part, this is a part of that. So I'm only one United States Senator, and so I'll have my voice, but I still believe that, and there's a substantial number of Republicans as well as Democrats who also agree. And if I may, uh, I agree with what the Senator has said. Uh, I think you'll find on the Energy and Water Subcommittee, which is chaired by Chairman Simpson, a tremendous amount of bipartisan support for what we're doing, but in terms of supercomputing, we've got it. But in our great city of Oak Ridge, I think your broader question is, in working with the department, uh, we've got the uranium processing facility, which is going to be a tremendous long-term excellent project as we continue to maintain the Y-12 facility. We've got a very bold and robust uh, nuclear cleanup mission, uh, EM, and worked very well with the secretary on that. As a matter of fact, I intend to try to chair uh, the Nuclear Cleanup and Hazardous Waste Caucus. So I think what, what Senator Alexander has said is correct. It's a matter of spending your money wisely as we prioritize, but the things that we're doing, particularly at Oak Ridge and, and in the labs, uh, and uh, to make sure that our nation is safe, uh, it's going to be critically important that we fund that, and I think we will do that in a very robust way. May, may I just add one, one uh, postscript, uh, particularly taking off on Senator Alexander's uh, point, uh, to make it very clear that, first of all, reinforce uh, working with uh, Senator Feinstein and Senator Alexander uh, has been, uh, been tremendous, uh, and working with Chairman Simpson, uh, ranking member uh, Captor uh, in, the, in the House, has also been tremendous. So, so we are, we're just, we're talking about what's the right program to, uh, to, to support, we're getting excellent support. And I want to say, you mentioned both the, both the administration, the president, and the, and the Congress, that even in these tough times, with this cap budget, within the cap, the president gave priority to our energy and science programs, and that was very well received uh, by, our, by our friends on, on both parties, both sides of the cap. Question at the back. Hi, I'm Karen Sloan from CNBC. I have a question for the Secretary about another program in your department. Your department recently released figures that estimates the profit from the loan guarantee program. The same program that gave loans to Solyndra that flopped and Tesla but that's doing very well and others of course. Um, how much does the department stand to gain in profits from the program? And the second question is, what do you say to your critics since you've released those estimates about the program now? Well, what we say to our critics and our friends has not changed with these new numbers. Namely, uh, this program has been and is, and we intend to keep it, an enormous success. Now, what you're referring to uh, is that we have, uh, we have in loans and loan guarantees and commitments about $34 billion in play. Uh, our losses so far have been $780 million, uh, just over 2%, which is 
pretty enviable in, a, in an investment portfolio that is taking some, some, some risk. What you're referring to is we just pointed out that we have so far collected interest on the loans of $810 million. Uh, so it, furthermore, the program is in the black, uh, and the extrapolation is that over the life of the current loans, uh, we will uh, generate about $5 billion in interest payments. Now having said that, I want to make it very clear that while this is you know, a good story in terms of uh, net you know, taxpayer uh, investments, this program is not about making those profits. This program is about moving innovation into the marketplace uh, across the board, all of the above, uh, solar, efficiency, nuclear, uh, fossil, uh, advanced vehicles. So, you know, I just want to make it clear, our principal metric is always succeeding in kickstarting uh, this clean energy across the board. We are doing that. It's not a bad postscript that we also have a little plus on the, uh, on the financial level also. So time for one, one more question. question. Yes. Um, the fact sheet mentions that supercomputing is very important for developing new energy sources and renewable energy sources. So I was wondering if the secretary or anyone else who wants to chime in could elaborate on what this announcement means for renewable energy sources and, and developing new energy sources. One, one of the very interesting applications of the Argonne supercomputer is to, to um, do a massive search of new kinds of battery chemistries and, and, do, and calculate how they will work instead of actually building prototypes and measuring. Uh, this allows you to look at hundreds or maybe thousands of potential battery chemistries, identify the most promising ones, and, and prototype only the most promising ones. It's one way where supercomputing saves you a tremendous amount of time and money in product development. Uh, and I'll just, just add, uh, just add uh, a little bit on that. So, uh, so one example, and this is relevant to what Congressman Foster just, just said, is uh, something we sometimes call the human genome, uh, excuse me, the materials, uh, the materials uh, genome project. So the idea is, with this level of computation, we can start to understand and design materials fit to a specific function. It could be a photovoltaic material, it could be a battery, battery material, we can look at how a wind farm dynamic, uh, how, do you sh how do you get a wind farm structured to take maximum advantage of the wind. It's already been catalytic in, I won't mention a company, but one company I can think of in particular, uh, worked with our lab, uh, Sandia <coughs> in Livermore, about understanding combustion and how that led to a much more efficient, lower emitting diesel engine. We could go on and on. I mentioned the super truck. So the applications are just across the board. It will also have enormous implications in things like bioinformatics. I'll give you an example, by the way. The uh, uh, not well known is that essentially every drug that comes on the market, new drug comes on the market in the United States, has at one point in its development gone through one of the DOE laboratories' light sources. I mention that in this context because as we go to new capabilities, such as the one I saw yesterday just being built, the next X-ray laser at SLAC, the amount of data that's going to be created is again off scale. We're going to need this kind of data. So this is a tool that is just going to be across the board, not to mention a security tool. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.